So here is where we are going to go, is what I want you to do is in your URL, type R2 Genomics. Hit return. This thing is how a, basically a platform should be. Of course, it's European. I think it's Norwegian or something. What's really cool is it's like this kind of group of these European researchers that kind of put it together and manage it. And they just, here's the problem is, is no one, especially in this country, wants to do something like this because you don't really get much credit, right? This doesn't really help you get grants or, you know, you helping other people do research better doesn't further your career per se. So a lot of people in this country, they're all about themselves and they're not going to put in, basically build this kind of infrastructure. So here's what I want you to do is click on that. And they are a small group. You know, I've done, re I've done some videos on their stuff and they've re actually reached out to me and were like, awesome, thanks for mentioning us. And I'm like, yeah, totally. You guys rock. So, I mean, that's another thing too, is if you get into like these, you know, groups like this, you try to get a hold of somebody at TCGA, they don't care about you, you know, and they're just usually staff and, you know, they, they probably got demoted. That's why they're like managing the site. But these people, I mean, they care. They're, they're all excited about your research. And, you know, so feel free to like some of these places, just reach out to them and go, hey, I've been using your stuff. I love it. You know, a lot of times they'll, they'll, they'll contact you. You can get like free tutorials, stuff like that. It's really awesome. All right, so here's what we're gonna do is, I would recommend if you're gonna use this like a lot, um, to you to get an account and then do that um, today what we're going to do we're just going to use it without an account but in the future what it allows you to do if you get an account you can save gene list there's also a lot of other functions that open up for you in this website so I think it's really good so let's use R2 without an account so we'll hit that button all right so here's what we're going to do so what I wanted to do is I kind of want to look at breast cancer. So here's what we can do. We can look at a single data set. This is how easy it is to kind of, so this is towards the top. Got single data set. Let's do that. Here is where you can get whatever you want here. So what I want you to do is click on this button here and this, this window should pop up. Yeah, too big. So these are all the data sets that they have in here. And there's a lot, and there are some with tons and tons of samples. So here's what I wanna do is, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just look at, and I was doing this like a couple days ago. This is usually, it's so easy to do a tutorial in bioinformatics because there's cool stuff everywhere. So I was just kind of playing around, I go, oh, let's look at breast cancer. Because I somebody talked to me, one of the, there was a student that was interested in breast cancer said, hey, I want to find this stuff. I was like, okay. Um, was interested in a gene. So what I did was I used this to, to find a breast cancer data set. So you can just hit return, tumor tissue breast. And now here's what I want to do is I want, to, want you to go to the N over here. So this is a number of samples. I'll click this. I'm going to hit sort descending. Okay, did everybody do that? Is breast primary the first one that comes up? Cool. All right, so here's what I want you to do is I want you to select that. So you're just gonna click on that row. And then this is basically gonna come up. It's a description down below describing that data set. Again, 3,207 samples. Do you think you could ever analyze that much? Like, can you generate that much data? Hell no. Not over a lifespan, you probably wouldn't do that, right? <coughs> it's right there, all of this data we can actually analyze. And again, we didn't pay for anything, right? These 3,207 samples, tens of millions of dollars probably to generate. Again, we get this for free. This is why I love bioinformatics. I love, 
I, there's always been a rebel streak with me. And I love the fact that I can go in there like a pirate and just look at people's data and then come out. And a lot of times I'll analyze people's like data sets. I'm sorry. Um, I'll analyze these people's data sets and, you know, other people's and I'll read their papers and I'm like, they totally missed all this other stuff. <laughs> like sometimes I'll even contact them and go, Hey, you know, I, I analyze your data and, you know, I found this and sometimes I'll be like, Oh my God, I can't believe you found that, you know? And you know, then there's a core a collaboration right there. Here's what happens a lot of times though, is people don't like you messing with their data, even though something to keep in mind is most of the data that gets generated, especially cancer data is funded by the government. We all pay taxes, right? This is our data. So if somebody publishes, right, and they get money from the government, they have to make that data available for to everybody. This is my in. This is my like golden ticket. <laughs> like if somebody published on something, there's a chance I can get to their data, guaranteed. All right, so we've got this huge data set. You can look here. They're really talking about estrogen receptor and the thing with breast cancer, you know, you have estrogen positive cells and you have es estrogen negative cells, right? ER positive, ER negative, everybody's heard of that, maybe? Okay. Well, I was kind of looking that, somebody had a question on that, like, hey, I'm studying ER negative cells and I just, I need some hypothesis ideas. I was like, oh, all right, well, okay, well, let's, let's go through this data set and let's go find something. So once you've selected it, what you want to do is you want to hit this blue button, current confirm selection right here. Okay. So you see single data set, tumor breast. And then if I wanted to say I was interested in a particular gene, I could basically put a gene in here, but here's what I want to do is I want to go, I want to, Differential, differential expression between two groups. Okay, so I'm gonna hit that. This is how easy it is to take a multi-million dollar study and use it for our own purposes. Okay, I'm gonna hit next. Okay. So here is, so up here, uh, we can do a t-test, we can do anything we want, man, Whitney, log, two-fold change, whatever we want. I'm just gonna do a t-test. I'm also gonna group by, so let's go to ER status. There's three categories there. So I'm gonna hit that. And we could subtract it, I could say, Hey, I want ER status, but I also wanted you to differentiate between men and women. Actually, this is breast cancer, so it's mostly gonna be women, but I could theoretically do that, or I could say, hey, I wanna subtract that by age. I wanna see what, these, what the difference is based on age. But in this example, I'm just gonna leave it blank. Hit submit. Boom, okay, got all this up here. Now here is where we decide what we're gonna do. So group one, I'm gonna make, this will be ER negative. So zero would be negative. When you look at these things, a lot of times in data sets, zero will, will be the negative part of that and one would be positive, right? So I'm gonna say negative versus positive. Okay, we go down here. Again, now they're starting to get in the false discovery rate. So we can say, I want you to generate a list for me, but in that list, I only want 10% of those or 1% to be false positives. Okay, does that make sense? So this is where you kind of see that. And that way I could set this wherever I want it. So I'm just gonna leave it where it is. And then I'm gonna hit submit. This might take a while. Maybe not, I don't know. Let me know when yours pops up. Oh, holy crap, that was quick. Did your results come up? Cool. All right. 
again, remember, you know, I went through the beginning, you know, it's like simplest thing, take two groups, do some simple statistics, you end up with a list of genes. We're already there. Bam. That took like, I don't know, less than a minute to get to this point. Again, this is the cool thing now is to figure out, okay, here's what it is. You know, here's our list of genes that are different. What are the cool things about this? How can I take this list and actually find something that'll benefit my research, right? So here's what we can do is, so this first one, A2ML1, click on that. So there's this view thing, giving you kind of a name on it. Why don't you click that? So here is our ER negative, and here's the positive. This thing has like basically, this gene is not expressed in any ER positive genes. But when you look here, there's a quite a bit of variability here, right? This is alpha 2 macroglobin like 1. We could rerun this test. We could do it all kinds of different ways. I can download that list and analyze that as well. But this is what I found interesting. I was starting to play around with this and I'm like, okay, well, A2ML1, here's what we can do is find yourself another window, pick another tab, And in the, in the window go, what is it, A, 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 M, L, wait, A, A, M, 2, L, 1? Is that right? What is it? What is the gene again? A, 2, M, L, 1. A, A, 2, M, L, 1. We can put gene. And then just put, um, I don't know, estrogen. And what you'll find, you'll either find genes on estrogen-induced pituitary tumor genesis. What you'll find is there's just not a lot of articles on A2ML1 and estrogen. You could also do gene and then breast cancer. See if anything comes up. Is it's not prognostic in breast cancer. I would hate to differ. <laughs> I def think it definitely differentiates between your ER positive and ER negative cells. But again, when you start looking, you don't really see a whole lot of, you know, articles that specifically mention this gene in relationship to breast cancer. I thought that was very interesting. We've got a very kind of a new, like this relationship doesn't happen, but based on the, you know, this thing I'm seeing, where is that? Where did I put it? There it is. You know, this is a huge difference. And again, I'm not finding, why do we not see A2ML1 expression in estrogen positive cells? I don't know. Here's what we could also do. 